Hello and welcome. In this second part, we will look at the market structure, fair value gap, and probably the most important element of the concept, the liquidity. In part three, we will also look at the initial balance and sessions, so be sure to subscribe. At the beginning, I would like to remind you that SMC is not a business strategy in itself. The topics we will discuss are the fundamental elements you can use to construct your strategy from. These will vary depending on your trading style, favorite timeframes, instruments traded and other factors. Avoid incorporating everything into your method, as it would become overly complex and might provide even conflicting signals. Instead, select two or three key elements and consistently apply them daily to improve your personal strategy. One of the most crucial decisions is determining the direction in which to open trades. There's a simple set of tools which helps you to determine the so-called market structure. It consists of two methods, break of structure and change of character. With break of structure or BOS, we assume that the market doesn't just go straight up or down. Instead, it creates an impulse, then correction, then another impulse and another correction. So in an uptrend, we naturally have a series of higher highs and higher lows. While in a downtrend, we have a series of lower lows and lower highs. The order is important. We only talk about a break of the structure when a higher high is formed in an uptrend while a lower low is not formed. In a downtrend, the opposite occurs. A lower low is formed without creating a higher high. Break of structure means that the price creates a new swing high or a new swing low by breaking the previous swing high or swing low, respectively. So this is a normal chart where you should be able to define the break of the structure. It might be a little bit difficult for you, but you can use a very simple method, switching to line chart, which looks like this. And all of a sudden you are able to see swing high and break of structure here, swing high, break of structure here, same here, 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 here. Remember paying attention to the lows as well. As you can see, these lows remain untouched. Market was creating higher highs while maintaining the lows and creating high lows. Same here, in fact. This is high break of structure. This is high, but this is not a downtrend because the market creates high low here. A useful tool is an indicator called fractals in ATAS. This is an S&P chart from last Friday. So I'm going to indicators and adding the indicator called fractals. I'm going to set the colors for the dots as transparent because I don't need the dots. And I will use the lines. Now I can set the line style to dot for the red lines and the dot for the green lines. And look at this. Look how useful this indicator is. This way you have a consistent method of displaying highs and lows based on a special five candle pattern. Look for long position entries if the price breaks through the green levels at swing highs while the red levels remain further out on the chart. So this is the swing low identified by the fractals indicator. And as you can see, it remains at the chart. Same here. There are red levels remaining at the chart. However, the green lines got broken. Open short positions only if the candles break the red levels, but leave the green levels untouched. So again here, this is swing low. And it's obvious that the price broke through. However, these green lines remain untouched. Change of character is a method used to identify a weakening trend, 
signaling a potential reversal and to prepare for changing the direction of your trades. Change of character indicates either a change in trend or a change in market behavior. It indicates a possible new phase of market sentiment that is driven by fresh institutional activity. Change of character is essentially the BOS in reverse. In an uptrend, the level of the last low is broken without forming a higher high. So this is a swing low identified by the fractals indicator, same here, and it got broken. However, the green lines remained untouched. If the price starts to erase the red levels while the last green level remains at the top, it may be a change of character. At this point, a downtrend or more significant correction is probably beginning to form. Conversely, in a downtrend, a change of character occurs when the price breaks the last high, meaning it starts to erase the green lines without first breaking the nearest swing low, which is the red line. So there was an obvious downtrend in this part of the chart. You see that all of the sudden price started breaking the green lines and the red lines remained at the chart untouched. It is in the name of the method. The nature of the market structure has changed. For example, very popular price action strategy called Quasimodo is based on the change of character. Now this is a similar situation. This is a gold chart. I'm adding the indicator fractals to the chart again and setting it the usual way. And it's really easy to identify the breaks of structure here when gold was breaking the red lines so this was an obvious downtrend however pay attention to this swing low to this line which remained untouched so this might be a signal that the change of character was happening there and it started being confirmed here when the price started breaking the green lines and remaining the red lines at the chart untouched so Let's summarize the concept of market structure. The trend continues when there is a clear break of structure in the new direction. So this is a direction and the price was breaking red lines, remaining the green lines untouched. This is very important if you start paying attention to this. This indicates that the price is surpassing progressively significant highs or lows. On the other hand, a new trend will indicate a change of character, representing a sudden shift in market behavior. This abrupt change signals a significant alteration in the market's direction or sentiment. So there was some rotation in this part of the chart. We will explain this later on, what the rotation mean. And then all of a sudden, price started breaking through the green lines, remaining the red lines untouched. Identifying these elements allows traders to adjust to market momentum and provides a strategic framework for determining the trend. Your success rate will increase significantly if you begin combining different methods. For instance, when you start plotting order blocks, and only enter a trade when a change of character occurs. You set a solid foundation for your strategy. By doing this, you can effectively manage trades by monitoring the break of structure until the next change of character appears within the order block zone. This approach allows for more precise and strategic decision making, enhancing overall trading performance. However, there are many more zones and levels to watch. Now let's take a look at the fair value gap. It's a very popular formation that has several names. Gap, single, price value gap or fair value gap. By definition, the fair value gap is determined on a three bar range in which the leftmost high is lower than the rightmost low or the leftmost low is higher than the rightmost high. Sounds difficult? 
You don't have to rewind the video to understand. Let's look at these candles. In the case of a bullish fair value gap, which appears most often on three green candles, this is the first green candle, the second one, the third one. So, so this is the formation of three candles. A gap is created between the high of the first candle and the low of the third candle. So the high of the first candle is here and the low of the third candle is here. So this is, this part of the second candle is the gap. This is the fair value gap. A specific section of the middle candle appears to be in the air. A bearish fair value gap occurs most often on a formation of three red candles, where the gap is created between the low of the first candle and the high of the third candle. So one thing is always important. The wicks and the bodies of the first and third candle do not overlap or even touch. There's an indicator with the same name immediately available in Atas. Look at this chart. This is Bitcoin and I made a slight adjustment to the fair value gap indicator. Let's go to indicators and I'll show you the changes I've done. Fair value gap. I turned off the labels. This is how the fair value gap indicator looks initially. So I turned the description off. I change the transparency, default value is 5, I'm okay with 2, and I also change the transparency of the green color, I set it to 120, same thing, I changed it to 120. Now the gaps look like this. Fair value gap is an area where the price moved so quickly that it made little to no pullbacks. It's basically a price jump, an imbalance. It often appears after rotations, which are areas where, in contrast, the candles overlap each other and serve to gather smart money position from market participants. So there was a kind of rotation here. You see a lot of overlapping candles in this area and all of a sudden the movement with a gap. This is a gap. This is another chart. This is silver. And there's an area here in this part of the chart with a lots of overlapping candles. You see that it basically didn't do any movement. They stayed in the same range, in rotation. Once they filled their positions in the rotation, they very aggressively started the trend. Fair value gaps are the zones of highest aggressiveness, where the market is almost entirely dominated by one side either the buyers or, alternatively, the sellers. The other side often tries to escape, leaving them in unfavorable positions. In fact, triggering their stop losses at these levels acts as fuel to the fire, further accelerating the move in the intended direction. So imagine all these stop losses above the range, because some trader could have traded shorts here, returned to the rotation, and they placed stop losses here. Firstly, the fair value gap can act as a guide to where accumulation occurred before the gap, indicating where it makes sense to plot the order block. In other words, the order block that forms before the fair value gap is stronger than the order block without the gap. This is an interesting situation because we could have anticipated here a reaction upwards. However, the market flew through and it returned to this area. So we know that this order block turned to breaker block and you could have opened short position here. This type of order block is amplified because of the traces of dominance by one side which set the stage for a more significant movement. The presence of the gap highlights the imbalance and reinforces the potential for a strong directional move. Secondly, the price likes to return to the gap to fill the volume, so to speak. So this is the gap which 
was created after the acceleration from this rotation. And when we move to the right, you see the reaction. Price returned there, spent some time here in a rotation and moved upwards. You can even identify the change of character here at the chart. Now when we move a little again, you see that this was an excellent opportunity to enter the long position in this fair value gap. So it can be well used as a target and at the same time the gap very often bounces the price. It is a strong support or resistance depending on which direction the price gets into it from. So there was an initial movement, some price development, price returned to the fair value gap, started filling in the volume, that's why the rotation is here, and then moved upwards. Fair value gap is the imprint of large institutional trades. For example, if a huge hedge fund sells a really large number of contracts or shares, it can cause a gap in the market. So we can see a huge rotation here at the S&P chart. This is the current ES chart and this movement, this very aggressive movements were accompanied by gaps. I mentioned before that you have to pay attention to the order blocks before the gap. So this is the first one, there's another one and that's it. And when we move to the right, you see how strong the reaction was here because the price returned to the area of this order block, spent some time here and then followed by this huge movement. During an exceptionally aggressive move, limit orders that the market has not yet settled remain either below or above the current price, depending on the aggressive movement. These orders then act as a break when the market returns to those levels during a pullback. It was here. This is the situation. You see that the price returned here and there was a really strong reaction to the fair value gap here. Because there was the orders. There was something like a break. Imagine how strong this movement must have been. You see the aggressiveness here. However, fair value gap served as a break and you could have opened a long position here. This dynamic serves to slow down or stop the price movement as it encounters these unfulfilled orders. And the big players who caused the original move will defend their position here. Therefore, fair value gap can be utilized very effectively even during trend hopping pullbacks, especially if the trend is exceptionally strong and fast. For example here, if you were going to join this uptrend, it's very difficult to enter, but you could have drawn this gap and entered here. One of the most important instruments of the smart money concept is liquidity. Within SMC jargon, liquidity refers to the accumulation of stop losses and the liquidation of the position of uninformed market participants. These positions serve literally as an offer and very easy prey for smart money. Their job is to fill huge positions and so they try to take advantage of every opportunity the market offers them or that they create thanks to their capabilities. Unlike retail traders who open two or five contracts, SMC has to get ready for the intended trend movement with tens or even hundred thousands of contracts. It's common knowledge that most retail traders position their stop losses near crucial levels such as above and below trend lines and horizontal supports and resistances. Therefore, large players strive to induce these participants to trigger the stops. These stop orders, once provoked, enable the major players to reclaim the volume they require. Liquidity is very easy to implement into your strategy. In my opinion, Without overstating what am I saying, it is a real gem.
you may have come across the term stop loss hunt or heard someone say they went for my stop loss or they shook me out of my position. Or have you ever experienced a situation where the market took your stop loss and then took off in the exact direction you wanted to trade and even made a bigger move? In no way does this mean that smart money traders are malicious and don't wish you to complete a successful trade. You can even verify this easily. If you run market replay in Atas and try to trade back a few days according to your existing strategy, you will probably find that you lost the position due to a stop loss in those cases as well. In market replay, however, no one has profited from your loss because you are only trading on a trial basis. It means only one thing, you are placing stop losses incorrectly, hence opening positions incorrectly. You are entering positions where you are giving liquidity to the big players, essentially handing them your contracts when your stop loss is triggered. They have endless amounts of money, the best computer system, and some of the smartest people in the world working for them. However, they face one significant problem, figuring out how to enter positions and gather all the contracts they need to initiate movement. There's a very accurate saying, Start opening positions today, where you had your stop loss yesterday. In other words, try to anticipate where the big players who can move the market will return to collect contracts through the stop losses of retail traders and wrong direction openings. To illustrate this, let's use the example of rotation. If the price stays in the range for a long time, there are two ways to trade it either as pullbacks to the middle or by waiting for a breakout. So this was the range initiated here and you can trade it in two ways. You can either trade shorts to the, let's say, middle of the rectangle or long to the middle of the rectangle from the area defined by the high and low of the range. In the first case, you will place your stop loss above or below the range in case price breaks out and is about to leave the range. So you would place your stop loss here or in this case here. In our example, traders expecting a move back were entering positions below the range. Since they were opening long positions, they placed a sell order as a stop loss in case the price suddenly began to fall. So when the price got below the range, they were getting rid of their long positions. They were selling. Breakout traders, on the other hand, opened short positions using market sell orders. In the market, in order for someone to sell, there must be somebody to buy. So. Who was buying from traders who activated their stop losses via sell? And who was buying from breakout traders who were entering short positions? It was the smart money players in both cases. They needed to find as many sell orders as possible so that the exchange could pair them with their buy orders. A large number of contracts can be a significant problem to fill. Therefore, they will very often indicate a movement in the opposite direction so that they can start buying massively and often flip the other way in a split of the second. It's obvious here because the price left behind just a week. They didn't spend here hours or minutes. It was quite a fast movement. So these breakout traders were hoping for downtrend and placed their stop losses here. However, when the price returned back to the range and went through the stop losses, it was like a fuel. We talked a little while ago about the fair value gap. That's exactly what's being created here. During the beginning of the aggressive phase, smart money traders actually want more and more other traders to support them in their intention and to push in desired direction 
in this case higher. This leaves no chance for the opposite side to react. Look how often you will come across the term liquidity around swing highs and swing lows. Daily highs, monthly lows, top of so-called V-shaped turns. There is liquidity waiting everywhere for smart traders entering positions here. Smart money traders just need to come for it. They don't need any information at all to know if there are any pending orders, any stop losses underneath last week's double bottom. They are absolutely sure that there is. The classic formations that traders start with are where the big players collect positions with virtually no effort. Next time you'll be smarter. And here we go again with the word smart. With double top, swing extremes, trend lines, horizontal supports and resistances. From now on, you begin analyzing the chart by asking yourself two questions. Where would I placed a stop loss on this position just yesterday? And where will I open a trade today, knowing that my stop loss provides liquidity for the smart ones? Because the mechanism remains the same, smart money will create an inducement, lure inexperienced traders and generate liquidity for themselves in those areas. Although liquidity may seem at first glance to contradict the principles of break of structure and change of character, this is not true. If you learn to identify the areas where a large number of stop-loss orders are very likely concentrated by retail traders, wait for the initial reaction and then patiently wait for confirmation, especially when it proves to be a liquidity pick, your success rate will increase dramatically. A lot of the best trading strategies are built on liquidity picks. Successful traders have it at the very top of their list of conditions for entering a position. Well, today you are one step closer to understanding the big players and the smart money concept. But that's not all. But that's not all. So click on the bell and we will see you in the final part of the video series about initial balance and sessions. Have a great trading day.